Ukraine, I'm coming to help. Russia, get back. Slava Ukraine. Ukraine has lost the war. Of course, the war is not over, but it is lost. Let me show you why. This has become an artillery duel. Russia fires 50,000 shells a day, 10 times more than Ukraine. The Washington Post says that Ukraine is almost completely out of ammunition, and there are no replacements for its Soviet-era ordnance. On June 10th, the Post reported that Ukraine is suffering 1,000 casualties a day, including 200 killed. The rate of casualties has doubled in just three weeks. Let's put that in perspective. Vietnam was America's last truly bloody war. We lost 60,000 men in 10 years. That's about 6,000 killed every year. With a much smaller population, Ukraine is losing 6,000 soldiers killed every month. This is a casualty rate 12 times higher than we suffered in Vietnam. But you have to then look at the populations of both countries. Before the war broke out, uh, Ukraine had 43 million people. But with refugees, it's down to just 38 million today. The U.S. population during Vietnam numbered about 200 million. So our population is roughly five times larger than Ukraine's. This, on a per capita basis, this means that their casualty rate is roughly 60 times greater than the U.S. suffered during the very bloody war in Vietnam. Ukrainians have, have fought with courage, but no nation could sustain such casualty rates for long. Ukraine is finished. On June the 12th, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg all but admitted that Ukraine would soon be forced to sue for peace. He said, the only question is what price are you willing to pay for peace? How much territory, how much independence, how much sovereignty are you willing to sacrifice for peace? Stoltenberg's remarks suggest that NATO recognizes that the war is lost. It's now become an unpleasant distraction that simply needs to be wrapped up as far as NATO is concerned. The sanctions war has failed. The entire financial might of the Western world was unleashed against Russia. The Biden administration swore that the Russian ruble would be crushed into dust. They boasted of destroying the Russian economy and inspiring a revolution. They would create such hardships that Russia would revolt and overthrow their president. But today, the ruble is stronger than before the war. This year, it has been the strongest of all currencies. Russian inflation peaked around 15% and is expected to subside. But as their inflation tops out, Europe's and America's has just begun skyrocketing dangerously. The price of Bitcoin dropped 5,000 points in just overnight. Uh, the stock market is becoming extremely erratic and rocky. Biden's attempt to strangle Russian trade has failed. Far from blocking their trade with other nations, the Economist reports that Russia is generating a record trade surplus with a billion dollars a day flowing in from oil and gas. Russia's $250 billion trade surplus more than doubled its surplus in the year before the war. Despite sanctions, Russia has forged stronger ties with China, India, South Africa, Iran, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, all of which continue trading at enhanced levels with Russia. Important countries in the global south are refusing to obey Washington's order to impose sanctions. Independent countries fear the U.S., but they resent being told who they may and may not trade with. Dictating sanction policy to sovereign nations is diminishing the world's respect for America. From the outset of the war, Russians have never experienced shortages of food, housing, heating, fuel, or gasoline. Anyone who expects Russians to crack from the loss of Gucci purchase, purchase 
or Big Mac hamburgers do not understand the Russian psyche. Hopes of ousting President Putin have died. On March 1st, British Prime Minister Warren Johnson predicted that sanctions would bring down the Putin regime. Since then, Boris Johnson has nearly been ousted himself in a parliamentary vote of no confidence. At the same time, President Putin's popularity rose to 83%, which is greater than any of his Western counterparts. Meanwhile, the propaganda war is unraveling. At the outset of war, the United States unleashed carefully orchestrated barrage of anti-Russian propaganda. All dissenting voices were blocked from the media. Western media breathlessly reported the dramatic exploits of someone called the Ghost of Kiev, pilot so skillful that he shot down an incredible 40 Russian jets before heroically dying in battle. But the ghost of Kiev was a complete hoax. It was a media concoction, a fiction, a fraud who never existed at all. There was another important false report about Ukrainian border guards trapped by the Russian Navy on Snake Island. Ukraine reported that they refused to surrender, cursed their tormentors, and fought to the death. Zelensky even announced that they would each receive the nation's highest honor, the hero of Ukraine. But this too was a fraud and a hoax. Those guards facing Russian warships actually did the sensible thing and surrendered without a fight. They were taken unharmed aboard a Russian vessel and returned to Ukraine as part of a prisoner swap. Ukraine's use of concocted stories like these puts into question not only those reports, but others claiming war crimes or battlefield victories. Yet until recently, the U.S. and NATO unquestionably, unquestioningly cited inaccurate Ukrainian assessments of the war. Recently, however, news outlets have begun acknowledging the possibility of a Ukrainian defeat. On June 10th, Newsweek reported that even the deputy head of Ukrainian military intelligence has admitted that Ukraine was at risk of losing the war to Russia. The first cracks are forming, and soon the world must come to grips with reality. The war... Уважаемые участники собора, сегодня вопросы этического выбора приобрели в мире особое звучание. Они определяют как вектор движения конкретного человека, так и судьбы целых стран и народов. И от того, насколько твердо мы с вами будем стоять в истине, насколько верными мы будем и верны будем заветам своих отцов, преданные и тем неприходящим духовным нравственным ценностям, которые мы получили, в том числе и через церковную традицию, вот об этом, от этого будет во многом зависеть, несомненно, будущее нашей страны, народа. Но в глобальном плане, я думаю, будущее человеческой цивилизации. Потому что даже победа над глобализмом в отдельно взятой стране не будет иметь существенного значения для всего мира, хотя и будет важный. Другими словами, наша борьба не, про, не против плоти и крови, но против миродержителей Твибека сего, духов злобы поднебесной, как об этом сказал апостол. И покуда будет наше Отечество вот этим островом свободы, будет и у остального мира некий знак надежды на возможность изменить течение истории и предотвратить глобальный апокалиптический конец, по крайней мере, отодвинуть его в ту перспективу, с которой никто из нас не связывает ни своей жизни, ни жизни ближайших наших потомков. И да поможет нам во всем этом Господь. Piece of crack cocaine 
no bigger than this quarter that I'm holding in my hand, one quarter of one dollar. We passed a law through the leadership of Senator Thurman and myself and others, a law that says, if you're caught with that, you go to jail for five years. You get no probation, you get nothing other than five years in jail. Judge doesn't have a choice. Under our forfeiture statutes, you can, the government can, take everything you own, everything from your car to your house, your bank account, not merely what they confiscate in terms of the dollars from the transaction that you've just got caught engaging in. They can take everything. I don't care why they become a sociopath. We have an obligation to cordon them off from the rest of society. They are in jail, away from my mother, your husband, our families. So I don't want to ask, what made them do this? They must be taken off the street. I have another New York Times reporter calling about my representation of the, literally, Dr. Patrick Coe, the fucking spy chief of China, who started the company that my partner, who was worth $323 billion, found it, and is now missing. The richest man in the world is missing, who was my partner. He was missing since I last saw him in his $58 million apartment and signed a $4 billion deal to be, build the fucking largest fucking LNG port in the world. My son has not made money in terms of this thing about uh, what are you talking about? China. My representation of the, literally, Dr. Patrick Coe, the fucking spy chief of China. Casualty of war is the truth. And if the American people knew the truth about U.S. interference in Ukraine, they might not be so eager to start World War III. During World War II, Western Ukraine sided with the Nazis. After the war, the CIA helped Ukrainian Nazis evade the Nuremberg trials and began operating with them within the Ukraine. After decades of CIA infiltration, the Ukrainian People's Movement emerged in 1989 and gave birth to extremist groups Svoboda, Trident, and Right Sector. Neo-Nazi groups pushing for the ethnic cleansing of Ukraine. Extremist groups cultivated by the CIA, supported by the U.S. State Department, and used by the IMF to bring Ukraine to heel. When Yanukovych beat NATO-backed Yushchenko in the 2010 elections, his government was being pressured into signing an EU association agreement by the International Monetary Fund in their typical conquer by debt offer that would financially ruin the Ukraine and place them at the mercy of the World Bank. Yanukovych declined their offer. And in today's corrupt world, you're not allowed to say no to the IMF. Funded by Western NGOs associated with George Soros and the CIA, a highly organized color revolution was immediately deployed against Yanukovych. Organizations such as the National Endowment for Democracy trained activist journalists to utilize Facebook along with three brand new television networks created within weeks to recruit people for the protests. This Western run media campaign was a huge success. The turnout was massive. The CIA has been orchestrating revolutions their entire career, and the first step to their simple formula is to convince people to take to the streets in peaceful protest. They then use agitators to goad the police into violence, and state-run media to ignite the crowd with emotionally charged reports of sacred victims. ...is descending into poverty. Did you know that? Had someone told you that? So the most advanced continent on the planet, the birthplace of Western civilization, our civilization, is getting much poorer very quickly. It's moving backward at high speed. Just a year ago, Europe was a modern place. For example, the overwhelming majority of Europeans heated their homes with natural gas, as modern people do. Last year, only about 6% of Germans used wood to heat their homes, but that has changed dramatically. Demand for firewood in Germany has risen so fast that there is none left to buy. You can't get it. 
So desperate Germans are now cutting their own wood, scouring the forests like their ancestors for sources of heat. In Poland, families are standing in line for days to buy coal, not in 1910, right now, tonight. Cars queued up outside coal mines hoping for fuel. The French government has announced energy rationing this winter. Just the other day, France had so much energy that it exported it to other countries. It was a net exporter of energy. Now, there won't be enough heat in France for everyone in the country to stay warm. In the UK, 70% of restaurants are preparing to close, to go under. Why? Because when winter comes, they won't be able to afford to keep the heat and lights on, et cetera, et cetera. This is happening across Europe in every country. So the question is, why is it happening? And the answer is extremely simple. There is an energy shortage in Europe. Cheap energy is essential. It is the key to everything that a normal society strives for. Prosperity, safety, a longer life expectancy for its citizens. Everything depends on cheap energy, but Europe no longer has it. And as a result, things are falling apart very quickly. So they're all in on it. It's a scam, but they don't care because they know they personally will escape the consequences of their own policies. So when the French president announces that his people are facing the end of abundance, he's not talking about himself. He's not facing the end of abundance. None of them are. Macron and all of them understand they will always be rich and always be protected. They know that for certain. What's changed, what's so very interesting, is that suddenly everyone else who's been paying attention can see that they were lying. They are frauds, and the entire population of Europe now knows that. And when everyone understands that perfectly well, a lot of things are going to happen. The status quo, quo will crumble. Factories will close. Unemployment will rise. Disposable income will disappear. And you're seeing signs of that already. Personal savings rates are down dramatically. When the cost of keeping your apartment warm jumps by hundreds of percent in a single year, you become a completely different person. You change your behavior radically. You're no longer tempted to buy a new $1,400 iPhone or shop at Whole Foods or even pick up an extra cappuccino. The entire consumer economy grinds to a halt because there's no discretionary income. This isn't a demand problem. This is a supply problem. And it stems primarily from the war in Ukraine. Because of that war, the West does not have enough energy to continue its economy or its society. Europe responded to that war by imposing sanctions that they knew would inevitably cause energy shortages. They knew it when they did it. Here's the president of the European Commission back in May. And let's be clear, it will not be easy because some member states are strongly dependent on Russian oil, but we simply have to do it. So today we will propose to ban all Russian oil from Europe. Really? Are you going to be keeping your apartment at 49 degrees Fahrenheit? Will you be walking to work? No, of course not. You'll have whatever you want forever. But the rest of us, she informed us, quote, simply have to do it. And it's not just energy that's being affected by these sanctions. In Brussels, Joe Biden warned that food shortages are inevitable. Remember this? With regard to food shortage, yes, we did. We, we talked about food shortages. And, uh, and it's going to be real. Oh, so we're all going to have to buckle down for freedom. We have to shovel billions to Ukrainian oligarchs who clearly hate the United States because it's the right thing to do. We need to hurt Russia because it's our moral duty. So did these sanctions actually hurt Russia? They caused food and energy shortages throughout the West. No, they didn't hurt Russia. Russia today has more than enough energy, more energy than it can use or sell. In fact, Russia has so much excess natural gas that it's simply setting it on fire. You can reach a place in your society where the people in charge and their lapdogs in the media become so completely disconnected from the concerns of actual people, become so totally uninterested in the lives of citizens, the society becomes very volatile and we are fast approaching that point. So we could fix this problem. The solution to this catastrophe is very straightforward. End the war in Ukraine. Reestablish energy flows into Europe and save the global economy, including ours. Is Joe Biden doing that? Are other reckless Western leaders like Boris Johnson doing that? No, they're doing the opposite. They're sending billions more from their dying economies to Ukrainian oligarchs, and for no good reason. Are we winning the war in Ukraine? Have we 
bankrupted Vladimir Putin like Joe Biden claimed we would, the ruble just hit a seven-year high against the U.S. dollar in June. Russia's doing well. Europe is not doing well at all. Now Joe Biden is calling for an unconditional surrender from Vladimir Putin. Here's the weird thing. By any actual reality-based measure, Vladimir Putin is not losing the war in Ukraine. He is winning the war in Ukraine. And Joe Biden looks at that and says, we won't stop until you proffer an unconditional surrender. This isn't bad policy. This is nuts.